From the Samsung Production Studios in the heart of Hazleton, Pennsylvania, it's your News 13. Brought to you by SSP TV and the Standard Speaker. There's nothing funny about it. Two cases in Greater Hazleton last night of parents charged for leaving their young children unsupervised. The kids left home alone, our top story on News 13 for this Wednesday. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Kathy Bozinski. It started as a welfare check. Police found five young children in a Hazleton home with nobody watching them. As Christina Papa tells us, their dad is facing charges, the home has been condemned, and neighbors are outraged about the conditions in which the kids were living. No parents were home when police knocked on the door of this double block house in Hazleton. Instead, police found five children home alone, all under the age of eight. We responded and found five children home alone, uh, ranging from the ages of one through eight. Officer Keith McLarney says they went to check up on the house after a concerned call was made by the Hazleton School District. City Health and Code Departments also went to investigate the living conditions. The uh, living conditions of the house were not the best. Half of that house has been deemed unlivable. Police say that needs to be cleaned up before anyone can move back in. The house had no working fire alarms, clogged sinks in the kitchen and a bathroom, but neighbors are most upset about the cockroaches found in cabinets and the oven. They want to see the house cleaned up. Cockroaches, ugh, they disgrace me. They don't deserve their kids and I wish they would clean their frigging garage. By the time the children's father, Freddie Cologne, came back to his home, police were at the scene. Officer McLarney says police are further investigating to find out about the children's mother. Approximately 15 minutes after we got there, the father did arrive home. I did not make contact with the mother. Corporal Trey will be doing the complete investigation. He will have the follow-up information for that. Children and youth are now involved in this case. Several neighbors say they were surprised to see children leaving the house yesterday. I mean, I have lived here for several months, but seeing kids, no. Police will be charging the father for recklessly endangering another person. Neighbors we spoke with pulled no punches when it came to where those five children should live. They don't deserve to get their kids back. Christina Papa, News 13, Hazleton. And a similar case in Hazel Township last night. State police have charged a mother for leaving her four-year-old and one-year-old home alone as she went to work. Hazleton State Police charged 27-year-old Clarabel Moreno Soriano of Winters Avenue with endangering the welfare of a child and reckless endangerment. Investigators say a neighbor watched the woman repeatedly leave her home just before 10 o'clock each night without the young children since she moved in about two weeks ago. When state police checked out the situation, they found the four-year-old and the one-year-old alone in the home without any supervision. They found Soriano at her job, where she works overnight. She was charged and released on $2,500 bail. Her children Children are in custody of Luzerne County children and youth. A man from Tamaqua charged with sexually abusing a young girl 12 years ago has waived his preliminary hearing and cleared the way for prosecution on federal child pornography charges. 45-year-old Robert Rader Jr. waived his hearing at the county level when sexual abuse of children charges were withdrawn, making way for federal authorities to prosecute him on charges of sexual exploitation of children and child pornography. Rader was originally charged with the sexual abuse of children and admitted abusing two girls under the age of five about 12 years ago. During that investigation, troopers discovered that Raider produced child porn videos and other images and maintained them on his computer and he was indicted by a grand jury. He's been transferred from the Schuylkill County Prison to a federal detention center. Well, not much being said tonight, but a local school was evacuated this morning after a written threat was discovered. The administration in the Crestwood Area School District says there was a threat in writing discovered on campus at the middle school and high school and that the entire complex was evacuated as is protocol. District didn't disclose the nature of that threat. Police brought in bomb sniffing dogs, which didn't detect anything, and eventually students and staff went back into the building and returned to classes. Police continued the investigation. Classes were disrupted for just about a half hour. A routine delivery gone wrong left one Hazleton business with a big mess on their hands this morning. The Hazleton City Fire Department was dispatched to CB's gas station on West Broad Street late this morning for a report of a gas spill. When they arrived on scene, they learned that while a company was delivering gasoline to the business, over 100 gallons overflowed from the underground tank. The gas spread all over the parking lot into puddles of water from the rain this morning, and it could have been a disaster if someone from a neighboring business hadn't come to the rescue. 
Immediately the uh, staff at the next uh, Lehigh Tire came out and put absorbent down quickly and also put booms out to stop the product flow from getting down into the storm drain. Some product did get into the storm drain, so we uh, advised the uh, Greater Hazel Joint Sewer Authority who's uh, going to respond to the scene to check the storm drains, along with uh, Luzerne County EMA and also DEP. The company that delivers the gas immediately called an environmental cleanup company to come and take care of the hazardous substance. Well, a not-so-smart thief took some copper pipe from a home in Freeland yesterday, but came back this morning for a second helping. Neighbors saw him flee the home, and as Matthew Petrillo tells us, while well, these types of crimes happen when floor closures are high, they can be prevented. We checked these windows, and we boarded the window up. Jennifer Brinson tells police she can't believe a copper bandit struck her Freeland home twice in as many days. It doesn't make you feel safe in your home with people breaking in and stealing your pipes. It doesn't make you, like... It's very uncomfortable knowing that people are coming in and out, in and out, and just think they could do whatever they want. Copper thieves first burglarized Jennifer's apartment building on the 900 block of Walnut Street yesterday. A male entered from the back door into a unit they knew was vacant due to a fire from last week. Yesterday we came home about 2 o'clock and there was no water. Somebody broke in and stole all the pipes. And then Thursday morning, the same thief came back the same way, though he wasn't so lucky this time. Now, the thief ran out this door and through the backyard, but there's an alley right next door here, and that's where Jennifer saw him. And we came to check the house, and I was standing outside and saw the guy run out the back door, through the garage, around the block, and go into the house up the street. Copper isn't all that glamorous of a metal, but theft of it has been on the rise. The price of copper is ballooning on the international markets, up from a little more than a dollar per pound four years ago to more than three and a half dollars per pound today. Yeah, this has happened quite a few times in our borough. Officer Rachel says that's all the more to make sure any empty or foreclosed home near yours is properly secured, as to make sure the utilities to your own house are protected and doesn't get trashed like Jennifer's. Best thing I can say is to close off all the windows and doors, make sure they're secured and locked safely, and... Uh, make sure the windows are all locked. Jennifer says others need to report crimes. People say they see things, but they don't call the police. Call the police because then there's families that are suffering because of scumbags like this, and it's not fair to my children or anybody else's children on our block. Now, police nabbed the bandit Thursday, so thanks to Jennifer, the only metal bars that metal mugger will be close to are the ones in his jail cell. Matthew Petrillo, News 13, Freeland. Head on News 13. You've got your umbrella. Well, you're going to need it the next couple of days. We'll tell you about a long, rainy stretch coming up in News 13 weather. But first, have you thanked the nurse this week? We'll tell you why you should and why nurses are called to the profession when th News 13 continues. They are the people who literally save your lives, and this week is their week. May 6th through May 12th marks National Nurses Week, a reminder for all of us to celebrate and acknowledge the highly skilled healing power that nurses offer so many vulnerable Americans. There's so many different things in nursing that you can do uh, with, with the basic understanding of being a nurse. And it's the only career that you can choose that has so many different levels to it. Um, as you grow in the organization, you grow as well in the specialties. Nurses are challenged every day with the technologies that they have, but most importantly, it's the only career that you can start off as a nurse and grow from that. You can change your role seven times within a career and still never leave nursing, and I think that's what's making the, the career so much more palatable to students that are going to school now. The feeling that you get when you've taken care of somebody or you have watched a patient come from a really difficult situation to walk out of the hospital with a smile on their face. It's that inner grat gratification that makes you feel good as a nurse. And those nurses are veterans in their field and say they look forward to giving people better health every day. Now National Nurses Week is just before Hazleton General Hospital's other favorite holiday. Next week is National Hospital Week. And time now for our regional weather from the National Weather Service. Checking the radar, showers, we got them, and probably a thunderstorm or two passing through the region right into the overnight tonight. Creative condition has no rain, just sunshine, a bright orange house, and a big old tree. It's by Cindy Nunez, a seventh grader at Hazleton Elementary Middle School. And now let's take a look at News 13 weather from the National Weather Service for Greater Hazleton for tonight. Showers and thunderstorms likely through the evening, with showers continuing into the overnight, the low tonight around 53 degrees. Degrees. And for Thursday, mostly cloudy with a chance of afternoon showers or thunderstorms, a high up to 66. Showers continuing into the overnight tomorrow with a low around 54.
And heading to Schuylkill County tonight, occasional evening showers and thunderstorms, then a chance of showers, low around 50. And for Thursday, mostly cloudy, slight chance of afternoon showers or thunderstorms with a high near 68 degrees, mostly cloudy at night with a low down to 53. And let's check the winning midday lottery numbers. Good luck if you played. The daily number, 614. The big four, 4347. Quinto, 78678. And the treasure hunt, 3, 13, 18, 19, 30. Hope you won. Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's Talk of the Town report. First tonight, the Hazleton Art League will be featuring a new exhibit, Three Realists, through May 25th, with an opening reception May 11th from 6 to 8 p.m. The artists include Rachel Mrack, Nicolene Fulton, and Gail Zambor. For more information, please call 570-454-0092 or check out hazeltonsartleague.org. And finally, the Valley Regional Girls Softball League will be holding its final registration, tryouts, and player draft May 11th at 5 p.m. at the Freedom Park Softball Complex in Drums. The cost to register is $50 per player with a $10 discount for the second girl from the same family. For more info, call 570-233-4520. That's tonight's Talk of the Town. News 13 would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Irwina Tunnison Breslin of Hazleton, Mass is Friday at 9.45 a.m. in the St. Gabriel's Church. Friends may call Friday from 8.30 a.m. until the time of service. Arrangements are by the Boyle Funeral Home. Shirley J. Drumheller, formerly of Nuremberg. Memorials May 19th at 2 p.m. at the Bethany United Methodist Church. The Stauffer Bresnick Funeral Home is assisting the family. Anne T. Zarenda, formerly of Glassport. Mass is Friday at 10 a.m. in the Nativity Catholic Church. Friends may call Thursday from 2 to 4 and 6 to 8 p.m. at the Jefferson Memorial Funeral Home. William A. Gorski of Freeland. Arrangements will be announced by the Cotterall Petrilli Funeral Home. Vivian V. Commissar, formerly of West Hazleton. Services will be Tuesday in Sun City West, Arizona. And Agnes C. LeBeau, formerly of Wallington, New Jersey. Funeral is Saturday from the Raymore and DeAndrea Funeral Home in West Saville, New York. The Damiano Funeral Home is assisting the family with local arrangements. Tonight's obituaries have been brought to you by the Smilax Floral Shop, located on 15th Street in Hazleton. Free delivery to all local funeral homes, call 570-454-0111. And by Mia's. Once again, the Hazleton area's number one rated restaurant. Call 570-501-3410 for information on luncheon packages. SSP TV Sports on News 13 with Fred Barletta Jr. Well, Lady Cougars were hoping that they would not only get a win, but they would also get a uh, Dallas win over Pittston and create a tie in the Wyoming Valley Conference. Well, you only could control what's in your own hands, and they took care of that business really well yesterday. You take a look. I mean, they go up to Plymouth and absolutely smoke Wyoming Valley West. This is almost mind-boggling. There once was a time where Valley West was one of the premier teams in the entire eastern part of the state when it came to girls track, but you can see those days are long gone now. It's the Lady Cougars who come away with the big win as they took uh, first in 16 of the 18 events. Now, unfortunately, they did not get the help they needed. Pittston edged out Dallas, and so uh, now mathematically the Cougars are out of it. Pittston is going to be the uh, champions in Division I, and the Lady Cougars are going to have to settle for a second-place finish there going into districts, but they're going to be a contender in districts. Now, on the boys' side of things, uh, well, you didn't get a win, and you didn't get a loss, a tie. They're very difficult to come by in track, but it happened yesterday. 75 apiece is how it goes in the books, so uh, that's the way it ends on the dual meet season for the boys and uh, they'll be looking forward to districts as well. Now, the Hazleton Area Cougar baseball team, well, uh, they know the same thing. The Wyoming Valley Conference Division I isn't going to happen this year, but districts is still a very good possibility, and so they're playing to get a good seed. They needed a win yesterday at Coughlin to keep that going. Our Mike Madry was up at Hilldale Park in Plains, and he has all the action of what was a very nice Cougar win. With the gorgeous weather so far in this early start to May, the Hazleton Cougars are looking to find that second gear heading into these last couple games. Tuesday night against Coughlin, they may have found that second gear. With Tony Hernandez on the mound, Hazleton could be assured they would get a solid start from the hurler. And they got 
just that. Uh, I told my catcher when we were throwing out a pen, I told him it was the best I've ever felt this whole season. Hernandez battled the whole night. In a complete game two run start, Hernandez picked up the win. The pitcher knows finishing these last games off strong is the main focus for the Cougars. We might not get the confidence, but if we finish strong, then that could lead us into going into districts, and we just got to perform good at districts. Hazleton's seventh inning rally sparks a 6-2 win here in Plains. Now with the win, their conference hopes are hanging on by a threat, and with two games left, they are still alive. With the season almost over and Hazleton still mathematically alive, they hope there is still a chance to win the conference. However, it's out of their hands. Berwick only has to win one more game to clinch the title, but for Coach Kara, the approach is still the same, in it or not. You know what, we play every game like it's the last game you're going to play, and that's really what we try to do. Um, we still have a chance, not a, not a big one, but the nice part of it is we still have the chance to be a one or two seed in the uh, district playoffs and get a home game and a bye. Besides the conference title, the Cougars still have their eyes set on moving up in the standings. Being neck and neck with Wyoming Valley West only puts more stress on the Cougars to go out and finish strong. Mike Madry, News 13, Plains. Schuylkill League Baseball, Eric Swinkowski, uh, he a uh, couple of big extra base hits, and that helped lead a 12-hit attack as Marion shuts out Monoy area. In softball, the Lady Preppers only had two hits, but they got three runs, and more importantly, GAR had none. Nice win for the Lady Preppers. Now, what's the deal today? Well, we got a lot of games on the board, but uh, they're dancing around the raindrops, so we'll wait and see. There's your high school baseball schedule. Again, we're hoping to get all of these in, but uh, the weather is going to play some havoc, I'm afraid. Softball, same deal. It's an entire Schuylkill League schedule. So depending on exactly where that rain is down there in Schuylkill County, that's going to be the uh, tail of tape on whether these games get in or not. News 13 Sports is sponsored by Sand Springs, featuring a world-class golf course as well as celebrations, the area's most luxurious banquet and wedding facility. Welcome to this week's District Newsmaker. Today we're at McAdoo Collares and joining me now is Mrs. Lazar, first grade teacher, and we're talking about Teacher Appreciation Week. Mrs. Lazar, you're doing some special things this week. What are you guys doing to, to thank the teachers? Well, our PTA is having um, fresh fruit delivered today in the teacher's room for all the teachers and staff. Monday we had uh, donuts and coffee for us first thing in the morning. And on uh, Friday we're going to have a cooked meal by the PTA, hot dogs and hamburgers on the grill, which is also uh, along with uh, Spirit Day for the children. So they're going to be free hot dogs and hamburgers for both the children and the and the teachers then? Yep. Yes, free um, lunch. <laughs> perfect, thank you so much. So, you know, this week is about the teachers and, and the students are really thanking some of them. What are some of you heard some of the teachers receive gifts? Well, I know some of the teachers have received flowers from their students thanking them for a great job that they're doing. And uh, some cards also came along too. Well, thank you. And I guess we're going to go talk with some kids now, first, uh, fourth graders, about who they want to thank this week. Joining me now, two fourth grade students from McAdoo Collares who want to thank a special teacher for doing something great for them. Jordan, who do you want to thank this week? I would like to thank uh, Miss Merrick because she taught me how to like say types of words and types of words, and she told me taught me how to write letters to people. Very cool. And you said you had more than one teacher that you'd like to thank. Is there someone else? Mrs. Walsh, Mrs. Pugh, and Mrs. Lazar. All right. Very cool. And what about for you, Kaylee? I would like to thank, thank my teacher, Miss Snap, who I had in kindergarten because she taught me how to tie my shoe. Those are things you remember. You know, I remember when the teacher taught me how to read and and what do you think? You think that it's special for these teachers? You want to make sure you do something nice for them? Yes. Definitely. All right. Thanks, guys, so much. That's this week's District Newsmaker. We'll see you next week. And plenty more news and information headed your way on News 13. A rash of copper pipe thefts throughout the region, but one not-so-bright thief got nabbed today. That story and much more news when the 13 crew comes right back.